The title of this video may be a little bit confusing. How can something be prehistoric? How can it come from before recorded history, but still be from modern times? Well, that's kind of the point. If it's confusing for you, imagine how confusing it's been for scientists to find creatures alive on Earth today that we thought had perhaps died out thousands or even millions of years ago. We've got a lot of catching up to do with them. My name is Danny Burke. This is the top 10 prehistoric creatures recently discovered. Starting off number 10 now, we have the alligator snapping turtle. Look at these things. They look like the result of asking a 10 year old to draw what things 100 million years ago looked like. Now surprisingly, they wouldn't be far off with that. You see, these creatures are mainly found in the southeast of the United States. They belong to a family with a long fossil history going right back to the late Cretaceous era from 66 to 72 million years ago. Ever since then, these 400 pound turtles have been just doing their thing. And their thing is mainly just being the heaviest freshwater turtle in the world. They have a large heavy head and a long thick shell with three dorsal ridges of large scales. It's no wonder that some people have confused them for actual living dinosaurs. Because of their name, most people stay well clear of these creatures. You don't want a snapping turtle to snap your finger off. However, scientists have found that snapping turtles bite about as hard as humans do and not nearly as hard as other turtles. If you've ever been bitten by another person, you'll know it can be painful, but hey, at least you still have your finger at the end of it, I hope. Next up at number nine now, we have the goblin shark. These are a rare species of deep sea shark and if I'm honest, they're pretty ugly, aren't they? I mean, look at them. Their scientific name is actually Mitsukurina Otsutoni. That's a Japanese name named after the Tengu, a mythical creature often depicted with a long nose and very red face, bit like a goblin. This species is an astonishing 125 million years old. Around that time, human ancestors looked a bit like small rodents. So yeah, these things are very old. They're so old that scientists sometimes call them a living fossil. They're really interesting creatures. They have a flat snout lined with openings that serve as electrical sensors that track down their food. You see, the fish they eat give off electrical impulses whenever they move that the goblin shark picks up on. They're big but sneaky, easily able to catch their prey off its guard. Whatever they're doing, it's working and they've been around for a very long time. Moving on to number eight now, we have the giant stingray. This may look fake, I promise you it's not. Most of the time when you hear the word giant before an animal's name, it probably died out a long time ago. The giant scorpion, giant centipede, that sort of thing. The giant stingray didn't get the memo. It's still alive and kicking and stinging. These things can be over six feet across, 16 feet long, and weigh up to 1,300 pounds. If that isn't scary enough, they also have a 15 inch serrated poison spike protruding from their tail. The good news, if there is any, is that the giant stingray is generally not aggressive to towards humans. If you do annoy one though, it's serious. Their sting is sheathed in toxic mucus and is capable of piercing bone. They're normally found in Indochina, Borneo, and across Southeast Asia. Their desire for seclusion is probably the main reason that modern science didn't even record them until 1852, and perhaps the reason they've stayed alive for so long. Next up at number six now, we have the triops. There's no mistaking these, they definitely look prehistoric. Looking at a triops really is like looking at a fossil come to life. They're crustaceans, that have a fossil record reaching back 200 million years ago. Honestly, I'm gonna say it now, that puts anything on this list to shame in terms of age. 200 million years old. The dinosaurs only went extinct about 65 million years ago, which is practically last Thursday compared to just how long the triops has been around. For such a long-lived species though, the individual members don't really survive that long at all, just 90 days once they reach their adult stage. An interesting thing to note about the triops is that their eggs are probably a lot tougher than them. And adult triops can survive temperatures of about 34 degrees Celsius for 24 hours or 40 degrees for two hours. Not bad. Their eggs, however, are something else. The eggs enter a state of extended diapause when dry, meaning they can tolerate temperatures of up to 98 degrees Celsius for up to 16 hours. That's just below boiling point. Unlike some of the others on our list, the triops are not endangered and can actually be bought as pets for aquariums at home. One of the product's names for them is Aquasaurus, a fitting name for such an ancient looking creature. Moving on to number five now, we have the alligator gar. That sounds like I just mispronounced the end of it there, but no, it 
really is the alligator gar. Despite the alligator part of its name, this is actually a fish. It lives in fresh water in North America and has done for a very long time. Fossil records show this fish is over a hundred million years old. This has earned it the nickname of a living fossil. The big things too, reaching up to 10 feet in length and weighing up to 300 pounds. It can live up to 50 years old as well. And let's get back to the alligator part of that name, shall we? As you can see from the pictures, they earned their name from having a broad snout and dual rows of sharp teeth. Unlike alligators though, they pose no threat to humans. They're slow moving animals and feed mainly on small fish, small mammals and insects. For me though, it's their scales that are most interesting. They're dark olive ganoid scales. That means they're bone like and in the shape of a diamond. They're also big enough to be used as arrowheads and hard enough that they will cause sparks when struck with an axe. You will have to take my word on that though. Please don't go and attack these fish with an ax. Moving on to number four now, we have the lamprey. These are some of the creepiest looking things I have ever seen. They're the stuff of nightmares. They belong to a family of jawless fish. Instead of a jaw, they have this toothed funnel-like sucking mouth. They range in size from five to 40 inches in length. Imagine a three and a half foot long one of these crawling up your leg in a river. Luckily, they don't really go for humans. They go for other fish. Their preferred method of attack is to just eat their way into the side of the fish and just keep going until they've eaten them from the inside out. Lovely stuff. They're called fish, but really they're sometimes not even considered vertebrates. You could say they don't have a backbone. No offense, lampreys. Next up at number two now, we have the frilled shark. We've got another shark on the list now, and just like the last one we talked about, it's been around for a very long time, about 95 million years. This thing is just strange looking. It looks out of this world, at least the modern world we live in today. The frilled shark lurks in the deep. It's been caught as deep as 5,150 feet down. That might be good news for most swimmers because these things look vicious. Frilled sharks have upwards of 300 pronged teeth, which act as sharp hooks to trap struggling prey. They have an insane ability to open their mouths extremely wide and can swallow things up to one and a half times their length. If these things sound a bit creepy, then you could try avoiding them, but it will be difficult. If I'm honest, they are everywhere. They've been found in the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, off the coast of Norway, Scotland, Ireland, France, Morocco, Australia, and Japan. They may not come to the surface very often, but that doesn't mean they're not there. Coming at number two now, we have the giant salamander. The giant Chinese salamander has been plodding around on Earth in basically the same form for about 30 million years. It's the largest salamander and largest amphibian in the world, reaching up to 5.9 feet in length. As you might expect from the name, it's mainly found in the rocky mountain streams and lakes of China. Now, despite surviving for this long, it's now classed as critically endangered in the wild due to habitat loss, pollution, and overconsumption. Its numbers are thought to have dropped more than 80% since the 1950s. When it comes to how creepy this creature is, there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is that they pose no real threat to humans. Giant Chinese salamanders are nearly blind and feed mainly on smaller salamanders, worms, and crayfish. The bad news is they make pretty creepy noises. They've been known to make barking, whining, hissing, and crying sounds. Some of these noises sound so much like the crying of a young human child that they are now known in the Chinese language as the infant fish. Yeah, no thanks. Sounds like a horror movie. And finally, number one now, we have the Tuatara. These reptiles can only be found in one place in the whole world, New Zealand. They owe their name to the Maori language. Tuatara translates to peaks on the back. 200 million years ago, they used to be one of many similar species that lived all over. Now, they're the only ones left. For this reason, they have fascinated science as they provide a unique window into how reptiles would have looked hundreds of millions of years ago. They come in greenish, brown, and gray colors. That makes it sound like there's some sort of toys you can buy. Anyway, they measure up to 31 inches from head to tail tip and can weigh up to three pounds. They have two rows of teeth on the upper jaw, overlapping one row on the lower jaw, and they're the only species in the world that have teeth like that. For many years, there were thought to be none of them left in the wild of New Zealand due to habitat loss. In 2008, though, a tuatara nest was uncovered with a hatchling inside. It's thought to be the first case of a successful breeding in the wild for over 200 years. That's good news. Nice. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Now it's time for you to let me know what you want to see next on the channel. We've done quite a few animal videos, at least I've done quite a few animal videos. Should we keep doing that? Should we go back to urban legends or do some more scary videos? As always, the choice is yours. Thank you for watching, as always, guys. My name is Danny Burke, and I will see you all in the next video.